you're far more capable than you think you are. People have, I, I've seen men push to their true limit and there's a lot more in, in a man than he thinks is in them. Men just need the right heading. They need the right course. And so where I push back on people with discipline, I'll say, you don't have a discipline problem. You have a purpose problem. For example, mm. what if I, what if I told you that your family was in extreme peril or future harm? If you didn't get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow and run a marathon, mm. almost any man would do it. Yeah. You'd figure out how to do it. And so I say to you, you don't have a discipline problem. You have a purpose problem. You have a mm. reasons problem. When you can develop the right reasons, you will become disciplined. Well, when people are saying they're undisciplined, what, what you're telling me is that you have the wrong source of motivation. You haven't found the right reasons yet. When you, found the right, when you find the right reasons and the right reasons start with God as a plan for your life, when you find the right reasons, you'll become extremely disciplined. Mm. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Built Different Podcast. My name is Zach Clinton. I'll be your host. And as we continue to grow, I'll have friends joining me each week to interview some of the leading experts in the fields of motivational speaking, mental health, ministry, and even sports. Our goal is to instill hope, encouragement, and motivation in and through your life today. And our prayer is that after each episode, you'd be more equipped and encouraged to look, love, and live more like Christ from the inside out. That's our definition of what it means to be built different. So I hope you're ready. You better buckle up. Let's roll. Garrett, welcome to the drive home, my friend. Zach, thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege to be here. Let me tell you this. It's not too often that we get the opportunity of hearing from a Navy SEAL, a man who truly understands discipline, consistency, preparation, leadership. Garrett, if you would, share with us just a little bit about your experience serving our armed forces and what that was like. Everybody hears about SEAL training, but what's yeah. it really like? Yeah, first, just let me say this, Zach. You know, people always put me up on such a pedestal uh, for being a Navy SEAL. But what I always tell people is that everything that you think of me as a Navy SEAL has nothing to do with me. Mm. Um, the privilege, I mean, the reputation and respect that SEALs have, they had before I ever got there. Mm. And now all I get to do is to uphold that. I'm a representative of the SEAL teams, and I look at being a follower of Christ the same way. That I have, that's something that I get to live up to, and, and, and I have to be a representative of what it means to be a follower of Christ. But uh, to your point, SEAL training is, is extremely hard. It's very brutal. Um, I've had the opportunity to mentor many tadpoles, and it's unfortunate. So many, I, you know, I have so many students that I'll believe in them. I see great potential in them. But for whatever reason, students don't make it. The attrition rate is over 80%. Wow. Um, uh, every year, there's about four classes of 200 students. Mm -hmm. And there are thousands of students uh, around the country trying to get those slots to get into 200. And then, uh, so it's very competitive. Just to make it to SEAL training is truly a great accomplishment. It's difficult just to get there. And then of those 200 who want to be there, all of them, it's their life's dream. They're doing everything they can to get through it. And of those 200, maybe 35 will go on to become SEALs. Uh, mm -hmm. And it really is testing for that uh, hell week, which is one of the most difficult parts of SEAL training, where you'll start on Sunday night, and you'll run over 250 miles between Sunday, Sunday night and Friday morning. You'll sleep approximately two hours all the entire time from Sunday wow. to Friday. It's a brutal training. It is test the, the men who are still there on Friday, they would keep going until they died. And that's really what the training is testing for. Could tell you story after story of some of the brutality of the training, but also where it paid off on the battlefield. Let me tell you this. As I mentioned, you're a man who knows discipline and preparation. I remember you sharing that with me, though, on a phone call a couple yeah. of months back, that you want to be an accurate and a proper representation of the reputation of what it means not only to be a Navy SEAL, but to be a follower of Christ. I always appreciate it about you and your heart and your humility. You know, my friend, as we're coming out of Memorial Day, we're stepping into the anniversary of D-Day here on June 6th. There's so many things that come to my mind about those who served our armed forces. And, you know, I think of a story of my dad when I was just a little boy. My dad took me out to the Arlington National Cemetery, and I remember staring at the perfectly cut and manicured grass, the countless marble white headstones, and my dad wrapping his arm around me and saying, Bud, don't ever forget this, that freedom is not free. You know, a lot of people view this time of the year as like the official start to summer, a lot of barbecues, Memorial Day parades, different things like that. But speak to the significance of it, not just being a time of celebration, but a time of remembrance and how significant these days are. I don't know if you know this, uh, Zach, maybe you do, uh, but actually the history of Memorial Day, where it comes from, 
uh, it was uh, Memorial, Memorial Day was started right after the Civil War in mm. I believe 1868, and the original proclamation for Memorial Day was that all people should pray according to their belief for lasting peace. Wow. Right, that was the begin because it was after Civil War, where this country had torn itself apart, and the proclamation is that people would take time to mm -hmm. honor those who have paid a price and to pray for lasting peace. It's written in the original proclamation that they would pray for lasting peace. And so, when I think of Memorial Day, I think of you know, uh, many of you are, are just hearing this, you're not seeing it, but I have pictures behind me in my office of my friends who uh, who, who gave their life for this country, mm -hmm. and I think of people who believed in something that's more important than themselves. Something that stuck with me since I was a little boy, Zach, is that God has given us all a purpose. Yeah. My parents told me since I was a little boy that you have a God has a plan for your life. And with, when you begin to realize that that plan is not about you, that you have a purpose on this earth, that's when you can love something more than yourself. A, a wrong life is to think that life is all about you. Mm -hmm. Memorial Day constantly reminds me of, of some of my friends and, and many of those that I, I never knew and, and those who came in generations before me who believed in something that was more important than themselves and gave their life because they, they, they were like the founders of this country saying, we will plant seeds for trees that we'll never sit under. I will pay a price for something that I'll never get to enjoy. And to me, that's so much of what it means to be a man. I think that's a very uh, humbling and sobering thought to think of men who, who feel that way. And on Memorial Day, that's what I'm thinking about. Amen. Living a life on purpose and for a purpose, not just a day of celebration, but a day of remembrance. And really even praying for, like you said, lasting peace, lasting unity, and also all of the families that have been impacted and affected by those that have really truly paid the ultimate price in risking their lives for this great land. We, sir, we live in the land of the free because... It's the home of the brave. Garrett, you know, one thing we talk a lot about, we're coming nearing the end of Mental Health Awareness Month. We've talked about a lot of different issues, but something that when we talk about veterans and military specifically, we think of is post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. It's the war that a lot of soldiers, a lot of veterans bring home with them. Speak to this battle for so many soldiers and why there's an epidemic of PTSD amongst our veterans today. Yeah, I, was just at a, um, I was just at a movie premiere for uh, a friend and man that I deeply admire, Mike Sorelli, for their movie. I don't know if you've seen it, uh, called Triple Seven. They did seven yep. skydives on seven continents in seven days, an incredible logistic event. Mike Sorelli is a, a man that I look up to and admire. And in the show, the guys are talking about how when they had gotten back together um, and then the, for this event, and then they left afterwards, that they felt that same emptiness of having left the service, that they were with the guys and then they were apart. And one of the things that I think is so important, and again, this is scripture, don't neglect the gathering of believers. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the greatest forms of resiliency, it comes from relationship, yes. right? Just take two little boys. One little boy by himself is scared to go and take out the trash, mm. right? You tell him to t show his brother how to take out the trash and he'll tell his little brother not to be scared. It's mm -hmm. going to be okay. And when you have people around you, this is, I mean, and again, this is scripture. We have people who are mentors. We have Pauls in our life who will speak into us. We also have a Timothy, people that we can speak into. And when you're surrounded by this type of brotherhood, when you're surrounded by a body of believers, that's what will give you a different type of strength. We're all going to go through different forms of, of trauma and things that are very difficult for us. Life is painful. We know from the Bible that life is also not fair. It's going to be hard for us. But what will strengthen you beyond a relationship when, and God? And so this is wisdom, not just to believers, but even to veterans who may be listening to this. You have to get around other people. Do not isolate yourself. The message of the enemy that this is, it's personal to you, it's never going away, and you can't change it. You're always going to feel this way. It's because of who you are that you feel this way, and there's nothing anybody can do to help you. And all of those are lies from hell. Right. Well, mm -hmm. So what we all, I, I would the, just a short piece of wisdom for any of us, veteran or not, if you're dealing with anything difficult, get around other believers, get around people who love you and can support you. It's that old simplistic principle my dad always taught me. Kids aren't afraid of the dark. They're afraid of being alone in the dark, right? We nah. need that band of brothers. We need relationships. We weren't made to suffer in silence. Garrett, you know, you do a lot of your teaching out of Luke 12, 48, to whom much is given, much is required. You have this, this thing, the podcast called The Impossible Life. You do Mighty Men's Group. You help men learn what it means to be great, to live life on purpose. You also have, you know, the mindset aspect of what that looks like. Help us understand how we can master our mindset and where we can go to find out more about Garrett Uncle Bob. Yeah, you can, uh, you can find out more about me just by listening to the podcast, The Impossible Life, 
or the impossible. You can go to the impossible dot life to our website, or you can find me on Instagram as just Garrett Uncle Bach. But you said it's my life scripture, Luke twelve forty eight. To whom much is given, much is required. And I feel like I've been given so much in my life. And what I'm living every single day for uh, is I'm thinking, you know, if you want to have uh, a great understanding of life, don't look five minutes down the road. Don't look five days down the road. Don't look five years down the road. Look a long way down the road. In the same way that Jesus said, any man who puts his hand, who looks back is not fit to put his hand to the plow, right? That's from an understanding of you need to look a long ways down the road. If you understand how they used to plow fields, they would put stakes at the end of the field. That's right. And the farmer while driving the ox would look at the stake at the end of the field. And that's how you're going to draw a straight line, right? If you look right in front of the ox, you'll end up making a zigzag line. If you want to draw a straight line with your life, you're not just looking at the end of your life. What we as believers have is what's called an eternal perspective where we can look beyond this life. Again, that's where like Jesus, who set the example, you can give your life and not prize it that you can give your life and see the value in it, right? If, if you think this life is all about you, you can never do such a thing. But when you have an eternal perspective, you can do like what Paul did, where you're in prison and you can encourage people. An eternal perspective allows you to bring glory to any situation. And what I want to do with my life, again, Zach, I feel like I've been given so much and I owe a debt on that. That really is an understanding of stewardship. These things don't belong to me. I have to make a return on them. And I'm trying to get to the end of my life. And here's what I want to hear the most. You know, there's a couple things. I'll be quick. There's just a couple things that the Bible says that we can hear. Bible says that we can hear. This is a, a, a scary verse. So the Bible says that Jesus could say to us, turn away from me. I never knew you. That's from mm-hmm. not being transformed. That's from not having a relationship with him. The Bible also says that we can hear well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what I'm seeking with my life to hear. I don't want to just, I'm not trying to just be saved. I don't want to just have salvation. I want everything that God has for me on this earth. I want to become everything that he created. I know he created me for a purpose. I want to live up to it. I don't want to get to the end of my life and feel like I missed it. And I I believe, Zach, that we can go to heaven, but we didn't fulfill everything that we were called to fulfill. And I want to fulfill my entire earthly purpose. You know, Garrett, something we've talked about is Memorial Day. We've talked about the anniversary of D-Day coming up, but something else that's coming up, June 16th is Father's Day. It's a day that means a lot to us because we both had the opportunity and the blessing and the privilege of having great dads. We have great dads to look up to, but there's a real beat down and a war on men in our culture and society today, Garrett. Something that has been radically pushed on the men is toxic masculinity, saying that there's this thing where men are just buffoons, they're porn addicts, they're bad dads, they're terrible husbands, right? We understand this. Yes, there's such a thing as toxic behavior, but there is nothing toxic about being a man. Speak to the beatdown on men and what you want to remind men of as you call them up and into this moment for such a time as this. Yeah, the the world is right now trying to beat down strong men, and we see it all throughout culture. But I think there's there's two things uh, about being a strong man. One, you you have to have strength. As as a man, if, if you don't have strength, that's not being passive. That's just being a weak coward. And I can't say it any differently than that. You have to have strength as a man. You have to train. I one of one of my like personal tenets. I believe this not just as a former Navy SEAL, but I believe this as a man of God is that I have to be training and preparing for something, right? Mm -hmm. I've lived this to me. This is part of what the sense of purpose is, Zach, that I I love the movie Sandlot. Mm. I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, Benny the Jet, you know, he's, he gets chased by the dog as a young man, but he also has this understanding that he's preparing for something greater. And then Mm -hmm. the final scene of the movie is him in the rundown. And he's been living his whole life for this moment. And I feel like, I, well, one, I know God has a plan for my life. I've been through seasons in my life, both in the SEAL teams and on the battlefield. I remember the, the first time I thought I had taken my last breath and I thought my mm-hmm. life was over. And in that, uh, 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 what felt like an eternity, but seconds later, I took another breath. And I literally, and this is why every time you hear me pray, if you hear me pray, Zach, I'll say, God, thank you for the breath in my lungs, which means that you still have a plan for my life. Because God reminded me in that moment, son, I'm not done with you. I still have a plan for you. And so if I'm still here, that means God still has a purpose for me. And if God still has a purpose for me, that means I need to still be training. I need to be, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's coming, Zach. I don't know what God has for me on this earth. Joseph thought that Joseph's dream was that his brothers would bow down to him. Joseph's purpose was to save all the Israelites from starvation and famine. 
He didn't know that's what his purpose was. I don't really know what my purpose is on the earth, but I'm going to prepare for it, right? So that's mm. it. If you'll think that way, you'll get stronger as a man. But the second part is that you've got to understand, right, like Ephesians talks about, about the way that a man is supposed to serve. It says that, you know, all, all men love this one, Zach. I know you know it, that a woman should submit to her husband. Guys <laughs> love to quote that scripture. They don't, that this, this shows... Uh, a poor understanding of the word because they don't read what comes right after that. It, but it says that a man should love his wife the way Christ loved the church. And the way that Christ loves the church, this is the second part of what I was saying, that you have to be strong, but it's also not about you. You have to understand that your entire life, it's not for you, it's for you to serve. And so it says that a man should love his wife the way Christ loved the church. And how did Christ love the church? He loved the Christ, uh, Christ loved the church so much that he said, I'll do whatever it takes. Mm. You want, th this is God in the beginning saying, you know what, you need, you need leaders, I'll give you leaders. You want law, I'll give you law. You need, you need mercy, I'll give you mercy. I'll give you a second chance. I'll give you a third chance. I'll give you a fourth chance. Oh, this isn't, this isn't going to work. We've tried this for thousands of years. It's not working. What do I need to do? He didn't say, what do you need to do? God said, what do I need to do for me to make this work? I'll send my own son for God so loved, mm. right? For God so loved the world that he gave. So that's what we're called to be, right? Love and give. It's not about you. You have God's given you strength. God's given you capacity, but use that for other people. And so to love your wife the way that Christ loved the church, and this is really what it means to be a man, is to love other people this way. I'll do whatever it takes for this situation to work out. What do I need to do so that you can experience Christ? What do I need to do so that my children can mature into the, the men and the women that God called them to be? What do I need to do so that my, my marriage with my wife can be a great marriage? What I hear weak men talk about is, well, when, if my wife would be different, if my kids would be different, if my church would change their message, if my job would give me the opportunity, and that's exactly what a weak man sounds like. And that's, the, that's where toxic masculinity comes from. It's selfish men and it's weak men. When you know the greatness that God's given you, when you'll train it, when you'll prepare it, and you'll have a heart for other people, it doesn't matter what people call you because wherever you go, you'll make things better. I love that. Not shifting the blame, but taking responsibility. And like you said, Philippians 1, 6, for I am sure confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will see it through to the day of That's completion right. in Christ Jesus. You gave a powerful line. You said, even if you don't know your purpose, prepare for your purpose, because you never know when God's going to reveal it to you in the snap of a finger. So be ready for when that time comes. Something that you and I both love to talk on is the dis discipline versus motivation piece, right? Yeah. Motivation, very external, very fleeting. Discipline, very internal. And and it will trump motivation and desire 10 out of 10 times. I was listening uh, to a podcast the other day, and it talked a lot about how don't just do your best, but do what is required. And I think there's a balance with grace and grit in our lives. And you have, I listened to you talk one time about principles over preferences. Speak yeah. to the difference between those two things, if you would. Yeah, between principles and preferences. Well, preferences are all the things that you like, and oftentimes are the things that get in the way of your growth. And they're the things that'll get in the way of how God's trying to shape you, right? Mm -hmm. Don't bring your preferences to God. Principles, however, is an understanding of the way the world works. Mm -hmm. Principles govern outcomes. They're universal, observable, and unchanging, right? And processes, when we see processes in the world, they help us understand what a principle is. The sun rises, the sun sets. It yeah. gets cold in a season. It gets hot in a season. There's dry seasons. There's wet seasons. These are indicators of principles, the way that God made the universe. And to me, that's some of the greatest motivation that I can have, by the way, is an understanding of principles, such as if I put seed in the ground and I put it in the ground in the right season and I water it the correct amount, then it will grow. Mm -hmm. You should pray for your seed, but you don't have to because that's a principle. If you do the right things in the right order, you'll get the right results. Right. And so what I'm looking at in my own life, I'm saying, God, shape my heart. God, help me be the man that you've called me to be. But I'm also asking for the just like James said, if you need wisdom, ask for it. It'll be given to you. I'm going to use the wisdom that God's given me. And Lord, help me see the principles that I don't understand, because oftentimes in our life where we feel like we're continually banging our head against a wall, it's because of a lack of an understanding of a principle. Mm. right? Leadership is based upon principles. That's right. If, if you care for people well, if they believe that you care about them and you show yourself capable, people will follow you anywhere, right? And so this isn't, yes, you need to pray for, the, for the, the leadership that God's put on you, but there's some things that we just need to fix in our own life. 
And really, my, my following of God is an understanding that God is sovereign yes. and man is responsible, yes. right? So there's things that God governs. There's things that I don't govern. But there's also things that he said, here you go, son. I've given this to you. You do well with it. And so like my, my leadership ability, yes, God's sovereign over that. He's also given a portion of, of it to me and say, do well with it, and I'll give more to you. That's what motivates me, Zach, that I have a God who loves me, who's a father to me, and he says, son, if you do well, I'll give you more. That's mm -hmm. the only motivation that I need. And just on the context of discipline and motivation, people, because I'm a Navy SEAL, people put me on this pedestal for discipline. And there's a few aspects to discipline. One yeah. of them is just what I call pain, endurance, and grit. And that's an important part of it. Yeah. Uh, that's an important part of discipline. But if that's all that you have, Zach, this is like a, the weight loss. The weight loss that a person with just pure grit and pain endurance would go through is, well, I'm just going to get on the treadmill and run till I'm skinny. Yep. And you can do that, but it's not what I would encourage you to do. There's right. two other pieces to discipline besides the pain endurance and, and grit. The second piece is what I would call time frame orientation and perspective, that mm -hmm. you can see the long term, that you can bring the meaning to it, like. I would tell you great is not my greatest strength that perspective is mm. that when I went through the most difficult seasons of my life in, in seal training that I could say, you know, this isn't about me becoming a Navy seal. This isn't about some personal glory. This is me, me being purposeful and understanding that everything that God has for me in my life is on the other side of this. So mm. I'm not going to quit on it or give up on it. I didn't know when I was 19 years old in SEAL training that I'd be where I am today leading hundreds of men in men's ministry. I didn't know right. that, but I could feel it. I could feel that this was on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And so through perspective, through an understanding that God had a plan for my life, I was able to pull the weight of my entire future into a moment. That's the power mm -hmm. of perspective. But then there's also just to, you know take discipline and make it about a weight loss journey because that's applicable to almost all of us, is that the, the third aspect of discipline is information and coaching, having the right people in your life who can help you. You know what? You got to have grit if you wanted to lose weight, but you know what would help you? Someone who's been there before, someone who has all the understanding. And so did people think that discipline is just about pain, endurance, and grit, but there's actually so much more to it. It's so good. Like you said, not just pain and grit, but also perspective and having the right people that are surrounding you, helping you every step yes. of the way. Speak into this because you have something that I think is a valuable tool for all of our listeners. It's called Mindset Mastery. It's a live online group training program designed to unlock your thinking and unleash your greatest potential. Speak to some of the lessons that you guys teach on specifically and where all of our listeners can go to find out more about that because I love it. I'm just letting you know. Oh, well, thank you, Zach. Uh, you can go to the impossible dot life slash mindset mastery. We cover 12 different topics. I won't uh, name all of them, but some of my favorite are on identity. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know whose you are. If you want to have a great understanding of what you're called to do in life, we talk about purpose. One of my absolute favorite topics. We talk about awareness. We talk about perspective. We talk about principles. Uh, each we do a different topic each month. It's a year long program. Zach, a lot of people, they want to grow in their life and they want like the short, easy uh, training. If you really want to grow, I don't have a short, easy training for you. But if you'll put in an hour a week for a year, I will completely change the way that you think. Um, and this isn't like Garrett figured it all himself. I've had so many mentors who've poured into me and I, I'm the byproduct of so much greatness that has come before me. And I feel honored to get to do what I do. But if you want to learn more about that, listen to the podcast or you can go to the impossible dot life slash mindset mastery. I challenge all of our listeners and viewers to make sure that you're going to check out those things because they're incredible resources that I believe will bless your life mightily. Get running short on time, have about less than a minute left. I'm just thinking of a listener out there today who feels discouraged and deflated, who feels like they're drowning by all the sorrows of life. What's just one final word of encouragement that you want to leave that person with today? A lot of people feel like they, um, they have a, a discipline problem. Zach, they think like, well, you know, I just struggle with that. I can't really get the right things done. And I like to push back on that. And I hope this will be an encouragement to someone. You're far more capable than you think you are. People have, I, I've seen men push to their true limit. And there's a lot more in, in a man than he thinks is in him. Men just need the right heading. They need the right course. 
And so where I push back on people with discipline, I'll say, you don't have a discipline problem. You have a purpose problem. For example, mm. what, if I, what if I told you that your family was in extreme peril or future harm if you didn't get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow and run a marathon? Mm. Almost any man would do it. Yeah. You'd figure out how to do it. And so I say to you, you don't have a discipline problem. You have a purpose problem. You have a mm. reasons problem. When you can develop the right reasons, you will become disciplined. When people are saying they're undisciplined, what, what you're telling me is that you have the wrong source of motivation. You haven't found the right reasons yet. When you, found the, when you find the right reasons and the right reasons start with God as a plan for your life, when you find the right reasons, you'll become extremely disciplined. Mm. You don't have a discipline problem. You have a purpose problem, right? Don't – just because it's uncomfortable does not mean you're incapable. Keep on going. Garrett Unklebach from all of us here at Life, Love, Faith, and Family. We appreciate you, my friend. Keep on keeping on. We love what you're doing. Thanks, Zach. It was a privilege.